I want to share something very important with you relating to your immune system to get through the winter and avoid getting sick. And even if you did get sick, to have very good outcomes. There are seven really vital nutrients that I think are more important than other nutrients. And I'm going to try to explain this in a really simple way so you really get it. And also how to get these nutrients from the food that you eat. Some of these nutrients I'm going to talk about are very deficient in a very large uh, percent of the population. So if that includes you, you need to a little more information on like what this nutrient does and where to get it. Let's start with the nutrient number one, vitamin A. It's one of the more important vitamins for your immune system, especially for lung infections. Vitamin A helps you make antibodies. Now, what's an antibody? It's something that helps tag a bad guy in your body, like a pathogen. And it helps the other parts of your immune system know who's the bad guy versus the good guy. So we don't want to attack the wrong cell, right? So the antibody is all about tagging someone. So it, it would be like a bounty hunter that's going out to find some criminal. They may not do the punishment, right? Put them in jail, but they help find the criminal. That's what your antibodies do. I mean, think about what a job that is. You have so many cells, the, the body is huge. And these antibodies are going around scanning, looking for these pathogens and somehow they can identify them and then they can tag them. And then they then communicate to the rest of the immune system to um, kill. Okay. So that's what your immune system does. And without enough vitamin A, your ability to produce antibodies and tag pathogens are greatly reduced. So now your body has a lessened ability to recognize the bad guys. And there's something else. Vitamin A helps your immune system coordinate this attack because it increases this very specific T cell called a T helper cell. That's all about coordination. I guess it'd be equivalent to like a symphony orchestrator, which uh, is out there coordinating the various musicians and their instruments. If you didn't have that person, it would all be chaos. So the T helper cell does a lot of coordination in this attack. So without vitamin A, you can't tag the bad guy, and then you can't coordinate this attack with your army. Now, where do you get vitamin A? A good source would be grass-fed butter. You can also get it from other things too, like egg yolks, liver, but I would not count on getting your vitamin A from plant foods because that mainly is going to be beta carotene that has to convert into the active form of vitamin A, which is retinol. And for most people, it's not going to happen. So more butter through the winter, more butter to support your immune system. All right. The next vitamin, which you may not connect the dots between this nutrient and your immune system is vitamin E. Now, vitamin E is a very potent antioxidant that protects the lipid membranes. Okay. So all your cells have a little fat layer. It's a membrane and it's made from lipids and vitamin E protects that membrane from being damaged by your immune system and many other things. I mean, think about what's happening. You have this immune system, which is your army that's going to fight these pathogens, right? So they're going to use weapons. One weapon they use is hydrogen peroxide. If you ever put hydrogen peroxide on an open wound, you see it all fizzing and it, it starts to oxidize and it starts to create this reaction. Well, think about what that will do to a pathogen. It literally kills pathogens, right? Well, all this is happening inside your body. So you're getting exposure to hydrogen peroxide and many other weapons from your own immune system. So vitamin E is there to protect against all this collateral damage. And if you didn't have enough vitamin E, boy, you'd have a lot of damage that's occurring from your immune system that is unnecessary. This is also another problem with people taking um, like chemotherapy or radiation therapy. Yes, it kills the cancer, but it also kills off the immune system, right? If you have to take chemo or radiation therapy for cancer, I would highly recommend also at the same time doing things like vitamin E, taking other nutrients to protect you against all this collateral damage. And just as a side note, one thing you could do to protect your cells against the damage from chemotherapy and radiation therapy is fasting, prolonged fasting. Your cells will automatically become stronger and live longer if you're fasting 
And at the same time, you have to do the chemo and radiation therapy. So vitamin E protects against the collateral damage. Okay. That's one thing it does. Also without enough vitamin E, the ability of your T cells and other things called the phagocytes that actually eat up pathogens just are less strong. So that's what vitamin E does. And guess where you can get vitamin E? From butter. Okay. You can also get it from leafy greens. You can also get it from nuts in egg yolks because it's a fat soluble vitamin. The next most important vitamin, which is probably the most important vitamin is vitamin D. I've done lots of videos on vitamin D on the importance of what it can do to your immune system. I mean, just across the board, it influences every single part of your immune system. But one of the most important things that vitamin D will do is it helps to curb or calm down an overactive immune system. So if your immune system uh, is a little too enthusiastic, okay, and it's like going in hyper mode and you have too much inflammation, vitamin D can come in there and chill it out. So any condition that you have that involves too much inflammation, especially chronic inflammation, like chronic arthritis, autoimmune, or even the cytokine storm involved in like an infection, vitamin D can come in there and just turn that thing right off. It can also lessen the duration of infection. One of the most amazing things it does is it just puts out the fire. Okay. But you need a lot of it. You need um, not just 600 IUs. You need about 10, 20, 30,000 IUs if you're going through an infection. And guess where you can get vitamin D? You can get it from butter. You can get it from cod liver oil. You can get it from the sun, but not during the winter. So many people just take it as a supplement, but it's a very important nutrient. And uh, you should know more about that because most people are deficient in vitamin D. The next most important vitamin is vitamin C. You can get a lot of it from raw sauerkraut, not pasteurized sauerkraut, but raw. Okay. You get like 700 milligrams. That's 10 times what you really need in one cup of raw sauerkraut. Incredible. But vitamin C is one of those vitamins that helps to increase your resistance and lowers your susceptibility to getting a pathogen. But because it's an antioxidant, it also can lower the collateral damage, just like vitamin E will do. But vitamin E protects the fat layered membranes. Vitamin C helps other things in your body from getting damaged. So if there's a lot of oxidation, free radical damage, inflammation, vitamin C protects the tissues against all this collateral damage from your own immune system. And a lot of times when you feel sick or you feel lethargic or you feel tired or you have a fever uh, or you have any negative reaction when you get sick, it's this collateral damage that's causing it. So vitamin C can help clean that up and make you feel better as you're going through the infection. The same thing with vitamin E. But the other thing that vitamin C will do is it increases neutrophils. Neutrophils really do three things, okay? They eat pathogens for lunch, right? They eat viruses, bacteria, parasites, yeast, fungus, mold. That's one thing. They also will release weaponry, like microbial agents that kill um, microbes. So it's kind of like they have this shotgun that they can use against microbes. And the third thing that they do, <laughs> it's pretty cool. They actually throw a net over the pathogens and contain the pathogen. So they can then inject certain chemicals to dissolve and kill the pathogen. They're like a, a little spider that can throw the a net over the pathogen. So those are the three ways that neutrophils work and they are dependent on vitamin C. And again, you can get vitamin C from um, sauerkraut, but you can get it from all the leafy greens. Even you can get some vitamin C uh, from grass-fed, grass-finished uh, beef, believe it or not, as well as grass-fed, grass-finished liver. The next most important nutrient that you need to know about is zinc. You probably already know that, but zinc is involved in several hundred enzymes, okay? Without zinc, a lot of things can't work in your body. But one of the most important, interesting things that zinc will do to your immune system is to allow the thymus to do its job. The thymus makes T cells. It's like a training camp for your immune system. And it's dependent on zinc. Without zinc, the thymus actually shrinks way down. It can't work right. Zinc 
allows the training of your immune system. So without enough zinc, your T cells get suppressed. So they can't go to battle. They can't fight. The weapons that they are supposed to have are limited and the ammo that is released is suppressed. So you're basically cutting down your army without having enough zinc. And there's a lot of people that don't have enough zinc, primarily because they're eating a lot of refined grains with phytates that are blocking the zinc, a lot of cereals, breads, pasta, cereal, crackers, things like that, whole grains, okay? And you can get zinc from shellfish, okay, oysters. But you can also get zinc from other things like eggs, red meat yeah, is loaded with zinc. There was an interesting study on mice, okay? where they had one group that was deprived of zinc and the other group was fed enough zinc. And both groups were exposed to a deadly parasite. And in the group that was zinc deficient, there was an 80% mortality rate. 80% of these mice died, the zinc deficient group. And in the other group, only 10% of the mice died. And this was the group that had enough zinc. It tells us that zinc is very important in surviving infections, okay, number one, and having an immune system to um, protect us against these pathogens, no matter if it's virus, parasite, bacteria. The next nutrient I want to talk about is selenium. Selenium is a trace mineral to help you make glutathione, which is another antioxidant, which protects the body from free radical damage, oxidation. Uh, it protects um, the lipids as well. And it also protects against inflammation, okay? All that collateral damage. And if you're deficient in selenium, your immune system is no longer as potent as it should be. It has a more difficult time fighting pathogens. And it also has a difficult time protecting the, your normal tissues from all the collateral damage. There was a, another study on mice that had a group that was deficient in selenium and compared that to a group that had enough selenium, and they were both exposed to a parasite, not the same parasite, but a different parasite. And in the group that was selenium deficient, okay, they all suffered multiple organ failure, okay, as compared to the group that had sufficient selenium. So that would be just another example, even though the studies weren't done on humans, I think it's something to look at, it's something to appreciate. And the problem with doing human studies is that who's gonna volunteer for this study? Not me. So where can you get selenium? Seafood and Brazil nuts. And the last nutrient I wanna comment on is copper. Copper works with zinc. I haven't talked a lot about copper, but copper is very important for your immune system as well. If you don't have enough copper, you're more susceptible to getting infections, okay? Copper also works with selenium in um, making certain enzymes to protect against collateral damage because it can act as an antioxidant, but it's also directly involved in immune system function and specifically in recruiting help with other parts of the immune system. So if you don't have enough copper, your cells won't be coordinated enough to recruit for help to have the full capacity of your immune system at the barrier that you're defending from. And copper can be gotten from shellfish, seafood, and beef, meats, it's in eggs, it's in a lot of different foods. Now, I've recently did a very interesting video on what vitamin D does to your immune system. It's a little bit more in depth and you really need to watch that because once you watch that, you'll have the complete knowledge of vitamin D in its relationship to bulletproofing yourself against pathogens. And I put that video up right here. Check it out.